Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. So let's go on. He says, uh, go back to John 15, verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Now, this is uh, something that I used to be very concerned about. In fact, yesterday I was looking at a commentary from an 1800s, you know, from the period of 19th century, a commentary from one of the scholars, a well-respected Bible scholar, and he commented on this, and he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He said that that means... God will take them home to heaven. <laughs> and, and it's quite frightening. He's not the only one. Many of them believe that in, in that day, in the 1800s. Many of them believe that this verse refers to if anyone does not bear fruit, all right, God will take him home. Now, does that frighten you? Like I said, it should not frighten you because, you know, you'll see Jesus face to face. But that's not the, what this verse is talking about. Now, we got more and more people realizing the truth, and I've shared this down through the years. The word takes away in the Greek is the Greek word airo, which actually is to lift up. You see, a vine, a vine, when it's on the ground, it's supposed to cling. Show them the trellis, all right? This is a, this is a vine tree. Uh, in fact, it's very early. It's very early. You can't see the, the, the thick branches yet. But this is a trellis, by the way. You can see the trellis looks like a cross. Amen. So the nature of the vine, all right, the branches will curl around the trellis, and that's how it bears fruit. It must be lifted to bear fruit. If a branch is on the ground and there is no trellis, okay, it cannot bear fruit. The reason why many believers cannot bear fruit is because the devil has cast them down, and they are depressed, they are wallowing in the dust. By the way, the number one enemy of Israel in the Old Testament is, are the Philistines. Goliath was a Philistine. And the word Philistine in Hebrew means wallowing in the dust. The serpent's foot is the dust. And, and, and as long as the branch is on the dust, by the way, uh, some years ago when I was in Israel, I was walking down the road of Emmaus with some of my pastors, and we came across a vine tree and the, one of the branches fell. No one was taking care of it. It was, it was a wild vine, but it was a, a grape vine. All right? And this is the, the branch of a vine tree that collapsed. And look at the branch. It's drying up. It's not bearing fruit. No one is caring for it. It's on the ground. The nature of the branch is that it clings to something. Sometimes it clings around the pillar. Sometimes it clings uh, uh, around a tree. And by the way, when, when, when you roll up, when you roll uh, in a straight line the vine, vine tree with other vine trees in a straight line, when the branches come out, they will inevitably twirl around each other. Keep that in mind. They'll, they'll twirl around, branches will twirl around branches. It's like all of them are holding hands. That's the nature of the church. Amen. We love each other. We are interdependent. Amen. And it's the branches. It's not just a branch, it's branches. You are the branches, all of us. Can I have a good amen? So you're meant to be lifted up. So the Lord says, if a branch is not bearing fruit, God does not kick the branch. God does not slap the branch. God does not say, oh, too bad you fell. No. What the Lord does to help it bear fruit is the Lord lifts up. Isn't the Lord Jesus always lifting up? He lifts up the woman of Samaria when no one bothered to, to uh, care for her. She came alone to the well. He cared for the for the woman of Nain when her son died. He cared for the tears of Martha and Mary. He's always lifting. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all, always lifting up, always restoring, always. And he raised Jairus' daughter. He lifted her up. And he raised Peter's mother-in-law. He raised her up. He's always lifting up. And the boy fell to the ground, and the demon was foaming. And Jesus says, leave him alone. Come out of him and enter no more into him. The demon left, and Jesus lifted up the boy. He's always lifting up. When you don't bear fruit, he lifts you up. Not he takes you away. And the same word, I roll, lifts up, is used of the ten lepers. When they saw Jesus from afar, the ten lepers lifted up their voice and said, Jesus! Have mercy on us. The word lift up their voice is Iro in the Greek. In the book of Acts, when the elders and the priests threatened the apostles, okay, to stop preaching in the name of Jesus, they went back to their company and all of them lifted up their voice to God. Iro, lift up their voice. 
John 11, at the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus came to the tomb and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Jesus lifted, I roll his eyes. Is the word I roll. It is not take away, it is lifts you up. A sermon from God should lift you up, not throw you down the dust, make you feel sin conscious. Are you listening, people? And how does God do this after He lifts us up? Watch this. Every branch that bears fruit, He prunes that it may bear more fruit. By the way, we have fruit, right? We have more fruit. And then later on, chapter, uh, verse 5, we have much fruit. Say fruit. fruit. Say more fruit. fruit. Say much fruit. Much. You know what's more and much, right? Much, you can't count no more. It's much. Amen. So be patient with yourself, by the way. And you start a church or you start a ministry or you start a company or whatever, give yourself two to three years. All right? Because a, a vine tree, by the way, does not produce grapes immediately when, after you plant the, 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 the vine. You don't, you don't have results in the same year. In fact, it takes about three years before the vine produces grapes. About three years. Amen. Now, some people get impatient. Where are the grapes? The first year, second year, but third year. But you know what's happening during this time? During this, during these three years, the root system is going down deep, and the branches is going out white and strong, so that when the grapes come, they are in position to hold the grapes and to supply the nourishment and the water. Amen. But even then, in the third year, it bears the grapes. It's really not grapes. Uh, of wine quality yet. Okay, you gotta wait for another five to six years. Five, number of grapes. Five years, all right, then you have quality grapes for wine pr production. Okay, and you all know that even then, wine <clears throat> is only really good as it matures. The older the wine is, it's like men. The better it gets. And all the men said, Amen. And ladies as well, amen. Ladies who are under grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, it gets better and better. The longer it is, yeah, age becomes a friend. Amen. You get better. And the Lord says, I am the vine. He didn't say, I'm the durian tree. <laughs> and you shall bear tawny fruit. Some will love thy smell and some won't. No, thank God he used the analogy of the vine. And by the way, when Jesus turned the water into wine, he actually compressed time. Because we all know that it takes about five to six years to have quality uh, grapes for wine. And then even really good wine, years, five, ten years to twenty years, even quality wine. The longer it is, the better it is. Jesus compressed all that to save a wedding couple from humiliation when their wine ran out. Jesus did a miracle of turning water into wine so that the master of ceremony, not knowing where the wine came from, when he tasted it, he says, wow, he called for the bridegroom. He says, you know something? Most people give good wine first because when their taste is still there and they are coherent about what they are drinking, they give them good wine. After they are drunk, you can give them anything, they will drink it. <laughs> but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus gave that, that, that credit to the wedding couple. His first miracle was showing himself in this sign from John as the Lord of time. The second miracle, he healed from a distance, also from Cana, okay? He's the Lord of space. And these are the two foundations of science, time and space. He's the Lord of time and space. What, it, what it's saying is this. You don't have to ask him to come down from heaven to touch you. He's the Lord of space. You don't have to say, the doctor says, I'll recover in nine months. He's the Lord of time. Wow. He can compress time. He can do things in an instant, what takes man a long, long time, Amen. all right? The question is that, do we believe? Because man's system is so opposite that of the Lord. Man says that you have to work before you can rest. God says you rest, then you can work effectively. Unless you are a branch, you cannot, you cannot produce. You cannot bear the fruit. I hate to use the word produce because it gives you the idea you're producing the fruit. The vine is producing the fruit. You are the bearing fruit part of the vine. Amen? Once in a while, it's good to sit down and just think. Even right now, his vine life is flowing. It does not flow intermittently. It does not flow, then stop. It flows and then stop. No, 
it flows consistently on a continuum. Even right now, it's flowing. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com. The world that we live in today, if it's not a terror, there is plague. If it's not plague, there's destruction even in the air and the food we eat. More than at any other time, we are in dire need of divine protection. But here, church, is where Psalms 91 comes in. God promised that there's a place in Him where you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. There shall no plague come near your dwelling. My God in Him, I will trust. We need not be afraid because the Bible says God promises you will protect us. God, whenever you see I'm in danger, you put me right at the right place at the right time, I need you. That is a declaration of faith. Psalms 91 operates when you declare it by faith. As you're driving to work, coming back from work, as you go here, go there, as you're walking along your merry way, not knowing what the danger in front of you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. The picture there is that He protects you from dangers that you don't even know you are stepping into. And this is your promise from God. A thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Give Him praise, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.